Okay, so here's my current little project that I'm working on. It's really kind of a nothing project. It's something that uh, I was just playing around with. I found some chips in my toolbox the other day and I decided to give them a shot and hook them up. It's actually some chips I've had around for quite a while. The first one was a T25089 and that's the little guy right back behind here. It's a DTMF tone generator, which is basically the same tones that you hear on the telephone when you dial the, a telephone, it makes a certain specific sounds. Those sounds, if you were to play them back into the headset of a telephone, it would actually dial that phone number for you. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I had that chip laying around. I bought it for a project. I never uh, built the project. And as I was playing around with that one, I found another chip that looks like I desoldered from somewhere. And to be honest, I have no idea where I got it. I looked it up online. I was pretty amazed. It was a DTF tone generator. And this one had uh, redial functions, and this one interfaced directly to a keypad. Uh, this one over here interfaces to a keypad, but not really the kind of keypad that I have. You need a uh, uh, an analog or uh, an anode, a common anode signal to make this one work, and I, and I couldn't do that. In fact, this one over here I hooked up to a microprocessor just to uh, to be able to toggle all the pins in the correct uh, fashion. This one over here. Uh, works directly to a keypad. It's really neat. Again, it's part number W91312, something that you'll probably never find anymore because it's pretty much obsolete. Uh, we have a crystal right here. We have crystals on both of them. It's a standard TV crystal, a 3.85 megahertz. And then we have a small signal transistor here hooked up in a emitter follower connection that relieves some of the stresses from the chip and puts a little bit of amplification to the speaker. So we're going to back up here and we'll test these out show you how they work. Now the neat thing with the one over here again it interfaces directly to a keypad so you can just dial the phone number. Oop, I gotta change my speaker connection here. Just the ground, there we go. And then if we toggle this pin right here, it will redial the phone number for us. So the neat thing with either of these chips is we can hook them up to a security system. So basically, someone breaks into your house, it could either dial your phone number or it could dial the police. Maybe you have a recorded message after the person answers the phone, what it's going to say. Or you can also use this here one to dial the number. And then you can do a pause function and then enter in a code, maybe another pause, okay, and then when we play it back, basically it'll dial the phone number, pause, and then it'll tell very specific information. So maybe we're talking to another computer or microprocessor, and it'll tell you exactly which door is open, or maybe this is hooked up to a water sensor, so uh, you have water in your basement. It gives you a call, and then the additional information will tell you exactly what is going wrong. There's the additional information. So that's pretty neat. Uh, the one over here I have hooked up to a microprocessor. We can do the same thing here. We can remove the keypad and all these lines we can hook up to the microprocessor. So instead of uh, us dialing the phone number, all the numbers can be stored in the microprocessor and we can just allow it to sense the function and then make the phone call. Right now I have the microprocessor just running through all the possible number combinations. So this is what you're going to hear in a moment is just all the possible number combinations. It's neat and annoying at the same time, I gotta tell you. So now this is pretty cool, unfortunately it's pretty obsolete because nowadays we can hook the microprocessor up directly to a Wi-Fi uh, shield or a cell phone shield, so basically it would dial phone numbers directly through cell phones. To use these chips you would pretty much need a landline and most people don't have a landline nowadays. So. Uh, not really the way you'd do it, but you know, I had these laying around and I thought I'd give them a try and it was pretty interesting that I could just look at the manufacturer spec sheets and find out exactly how to hook them up and especially this one, I desoldered it from who knows where and it works perfectly. The other neat thing is this little chip over here to be able to store numbers and the date range when that chip was made is pretty impressive, all the little functions that this thing 
can, actually both of them, is the, the things that it can do. So just a little thing that I was working on and give you a little demonstration of my automatic phone dialer.